Hello everyone. So today I wanted to show you how to run code in the background from an ABOP program. So we're going to be using a regular executable ABOP program. Uh, nothing fancy, just a regular executable report program. But um, sometimes we have you know, things that we want to run in the background. Say for example, we want to generate some data. We know it's going to take a long time or we want to maybe send a bunch of emails after say for example a user goes through and puts a check next to a bunch of different purchase orders or invoices whatever kind of document you have in a in SAP and say for example we want to send a hundred emails the user has selected a hundred different emails that should go out and click send so we don't want to execute that in the foreground because why would we want to make our user wait while a hundred emails get sent right so what we want to do is then execute that code in the background. So one way to do that is by using the ABOP submit keyword. Submit allows us to call a report. We can do it in the background and we can return back to the regular flow of our program. So let's give an example of that. I've already written this code so you guys don't have to sit here and watch me type. Created a regular report program called Z underscore background job. And so if you're running in the background via a submit call, this SY batch is going to equal ABOP true. It's going to be an X in that value. If not, it's going to be ABOP false, which is, you know, an empty character string. So this report actually functions as two different reports because normally what we want to do when we submit something in the background is submit and then give the report name. Well, in this case, I'm using the one program, Z background job, as sort of the driver program and as the submittable report program. So that's why in start a selection here, I check SY batch. If we're not running a batch job, I just say create and submit job. This is a subroutine down here. And if this is running as a batch job, I say simulate work. So the easiest one to check out is the simulate work uh, subroutine. So if we double click on it, It'll take us down to our simulate work subroutine. In here, I've just said wait up to 30 seconds. So what that's going to do is pause execution and wait for 30 seconds just to simulate some background work. So now let's look at how to actually create a job. You know, we can use these two function modules, call function job open and job close. So what job open is going to do if we hit F1 on it and go to look at the actual uh, function module. So we can see here, use job open to create a background job. The function module returns the unique ID number which, together with the job name, is required for identifying the job. Once you have opened a job, you can add job steps to it with job submit and submit the job for processing with job close. So you can use job submit, of course, if you want to add multiple steps and do all kind of different complex behavior but in this case we're just opening our job we're getting this job name that we can submit to it so we just say here test job and this is the type of course and we receive the number of the job which along with the name is the unique identifier so we define here number and name uh, we also define print parameters of type PRI underscore params so what we're doing here is making a call to job open and just some rudimentary at the very best error handling so this is saying we're gonna go ahead and create a background job um, I actually don't even need this I copied from uh, something I wrote earlier so I don't even need that so what we're doing now is the actual work of the background job so we can say submit Z background job which is this report and if we submit it as a background job, we're going to get execution here to start a selection. We're going to see SY batch is true, so it's just going to call this simulate work, which waits 30 seconds. So we submit this job to SAP spool, spool parameters, print parameters. We can add any sort of parameters in here. Say, for example, um, if you know a user were going to, if this job were going to print something or you know do something with uh, the actual spool request we could you know set that in here so I won't go over that in this video just know that it's an option we say without spool den pro so without any screen 
via job name. Now job name is going to be name and number number that we receive from job open. So we're basically saying execute this report in the background with this background job of name and of this number and return. So this is a non-blocking call. The code after this submit will immediately run after we submit it. It, we, it won't wait around for this to run in the background. So what I'll say is, just to make this a little more easy to understand, message job has been submitted of type information. So then we call job close to say that everything's done with our job. We've submitted our job. We can close this uh, actual job. Um, again, some rudimentary error handling, just some system message if something goes wrong. But so what we're going to do, the first time we run this report, let's go ahead and activate it. The first time we run this report, SY batch is going to equal ABOP false. So it's going to create and submit this job. Well, this job is going to run, which is going to call the same report, kind of a weird recursive thing here, but it's going to call the same report Z background job, in which case SY batch will not equal ABOP false. It'll equal ABOP true because it's a batch job running in the background. So it's going to call this simulate work subroutine, which is just going to wait 30 seconds. Again, that's just to simulate an actual job running. But there is another transaction that we want to take a look at. Before we run this, I'll go ahead and pull up both of these transactions so you guys can see. Let's open this on the left. Go ahead and open this on the right or vice versa. <laughs> We're going to call transaction SM37. So SM37 is a transaction that lets us see background jobs. We specify either a job name or a username or both. We can see, you know, scheduled, released, ready, active, finished, canceled status, all this different stuff. Um, we could actually even say about program name for the job step here and search on that. But if we execute this, we're going to see a list of all the background jobs. So code inspector deletion, a couple of just regular background jobs, scheduled, active, that sort of thing. Now if we go back, if we execute this program that we just wrote, the first time we execute it, we're going to execute it in the foreground. So what's going to happen is we're going to call create and submit job. So it's going to create this job called test job. It's going to submit this very same program that we're doing now, except for it's going to only run this subroutine and then it's going to close the job. So let's go ahead and do direct processing and execute it. We should get this job being submitted and this message job has been submitted. So this is now going to call this program as a background job and this is going to run wait up to 30 seconds. So if we go over here and do execute in SM37, we see we have test job active. Let's go ahead and make this full screen. Refresh. So we see it's been running for 13 seconds. Once this gets to 30 seconds, this job will go from active to finished. So this is all running in the background. And just to demonstrate, we've returned control here to SE38. We can uh, you know, do something different. The beauty of having the job in the background is that we are, of course, going to not tie our user up with something else. So we see here duration 32 seconds. That's because, guys, I don't have a whole lot of RAM on this test uh, SAP server, so things are running slowly. But 32 seconds with a one second delay, so around 30 seconds. So that's our method call to wait up to, uh, or not method call, but our keyword call, wait up to uh, 30 seconds. So if we double click on this test job in transaction SE37, we'll be taken to this. We'll see finished. Um, you know, email notification, job log, job details. We can look at all this stuff. One step to find. So we see step 001, started program, Z background job, user ID developer, and job finished, and it's success. So that's pretty good there. Um, so how do we, let's actually add a message in here. Let's say message, let's do job finished type S, just to show you guys the actual way messages work in a background job. So we'll add this message, job finished, type success, 
at the end of our background job getting run. So what we'll do is run this. It'll kick off a, another test job entry here. Go ahead and run it. Job has been submitted. So now controls return to the calling program. We click refresh. We see test job down here that is run at the current time. We see the duration. It's going to go ahead and run for 30 seconds, just as we said, wait up to 30 seconds to simulate some actual work. Once it hits 30 seconds, we'll be able to look at the end result. So we'll just do a refresh a couple more times until this hits 30 seconds and it finishes. So it's now finished. If we double click on the execution and do job log, we can see here our job log finished. We had a message of type success, job finished. So that is our success message there. Actually, let's just do something completely obvious here. This job has finished. Let's activate it and run it again. Job has been submitted. Go back to our SM37 overview. We see another execution of the job. Come down here, say job log. So we see it started. And once this finishes, we'll be able to see something that I wanted to point out. Let's just go back here. It's been running for 21 seconds, 22. Doo, doo, doo. Should have done 15 seconds, I guess, guys. <laughs> no use in waiting around for 30 seconds. So, 30 seconds. Job is finished. Double click on it. Go to job log. So, this message here, the success message, is actually by the created by the background job. This is not our message here. So, this brings up the point what happens if we have an error message? This job has finished unsuccessfully. So check it, activate it, and we'll run it once more. Let's go back here to SM37's main screen after we submit. And we'll run this background job program once more. So we see job's been submitted. It'll run for 30 seconds, and then we'll have this error message it shows up this job is finished unsuccessfully so we'll just pause this while it runs so our job has run we've given this error message this job has finished unsuccessfully and we see here in our job log status in transaction sm37 canceled so if we you know highlight our job or double click on it go to job log either way we do job log here so we say this job has finished unsuccessfully the message class if there was one message number and our message type error so by throwing up an error message in our job we can actually get something in the job log here that will change the status of our job so this is useful you know you guys can write reports to see canceled job status and all this different stuff um, don't do it necessarily if it's a scheduled job that runs every minute but you know, if you have something that's maybe kicked off manually, like this this program here, maybe you want to write a program to notify of these, you know, canceled or failed jobs. But that's a a very very basic overview of how to do a background job where some work is being done in the background and control is returned to the calling program. The easiest way to do it is just by submitting a report. You know, you can submit it with actual parameters and submit it via a job so this right here is running in the background every time because that's why batch is true and we can look at our actual status in sm37 so that wraps it up for the very basics on background jobs running stuff in the background from an abop report actually running a report in the background is a separate thing and uh, i'll also make a video on that just so you guys are aware of that like say for example this was a program that all it did was, uh, you know, query some data and send an email. We're not going to want to run that from a driver program in the background. That report itself is going to be run in the background. So that's a different thing. 
But, you know, say for example, this report shows an ALV grid and you're going to work with the grid entries, but each grid entry is going to represent a large amount of work that needs to be completed once that whatever function is called on that. So that's that's an example of why you'd want to use the submit via job and do something in the background. So thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment. My email address is usually in the video description, so if you have something you want to ask personally, please do not hesitate to leave me an email. If you like this video, please give me a like. If you really liked it, give me a subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.